Hello, this is Graham, and in this video, we're going to delve into the psychodynamic understanding of the structure of personality and how this plays a pivotal role in unlocking the mysteries of the human psyche. Understanding personality structure is key to interpreting the inner workings of our client's mind, shedding light on their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Through the intricacies of the id, ego, and superego, we can appreciate how our desires, rationality, and moral compass intersect within us. We'll explore the roles of these psychic forces, as well as the ingenious defense mechanisms that we use to cope with life's challenges. This understanding can be a catalyst for transformation and healing in the realm of psychodynamic counseling. Freud's pioneering work has given us profound insights into the inner workings of the mind, particularly through his conceptualization of the three components of personality. Firstly, the id. Imagine the id as the primal pleasure-seeking force within us. It's driven by instinctual needs like hunger, desire, and basic urges. The id seeks immediate gratification without regard for the consequences. It's the part of us that might implore us to devour an entire chocolate cake purely for the immediate pleasure that it offers. The ego, in the delicate balance of our psyche, is the second part. It's the rational, reality oriented component. It's the voice of reason that seeks to mediate between the demands of the id and the moral compass of the superego. In our cake scenario, it's the ego that intervenes, suggesting moderation, reminding us that consuming the entire cake might not be wise or healthy. Lastly, we have the superego, often seen as I've just described it as the moral compass of our personality. It represents societal and internalized values, instilling a sense of right and wrong. In our cake situation, the superego might be the source of guilt, even for entertaining the idea of indulging excessively. It upholds societal norms and internalized values, striving for virtuous behavior all the time. The interplay between these three components profoundly shapes our behavior and decision making. The id drives our primal desires, seeking pleasure without considering the consequences. The ego, in its wisdom, aims to balance these desires with reality, promoting choices that satisfy our needs without jeopardizing our well-being. The superego, ever watchful, ensures our decisions align with our moral and societal values, often tugging us away from indulgence. In our everyday lives, these components often engage in a delicate dance. Picture a person struggling with a New Year's resolution to eat healthier. The id might tempt them to devour that tempting chocolate cake. But the ego intervenes, suggesting a smaller, more moderate portion. Meanwhile, the superego may cast a shadow of guilt over the very thought of indulging. This dynamic interplay between the id, ego and superego is a central aspect of personality. It's a reflection of the complexities within each of us, shaping our choices, guiding our behavior, and contributing to the unique tapestry of our individual personalities. Understanding this framework allows us to fathom the intricate mechanisms that drive our actions and decisions. It provides us with insights into the forces at play within us, offering us a greater awareness of why we act the way we do and perhaps guiding us towards making more conscious, balanced and morally sound choices. Thus, the id, ego and superego are not merely theoretical constructs. They're the very forces that shape our everyday lives, guiding our decisions and influencing our behaviour. They're the testament to the complexities of human personality and the intricate tapestry of the human mind. Defence mechanisms are the unsung heroes of the mind, working quietly in the background to protect our sense of self and preserve our psychological well-being. Defence mechanisms are psychological strategies that help protect the ego, the rational, reality oriented part of our personality, from distressing or threatening thoughts, feelings or desires. 
They serve as psychological shields, allowing us to cope with anxiety and inner conflicts, often without conscious awareness of them. So let's explore a few common defence mechanisms. Firstly, repression. This is the mind's ultimate out of sight, out of mind strategy. When someone represses memories or thoughts, they're effectively pushing distressing or traumatic experiences into the depths of their unconscious. For instance, a person who has repressed traumatic childhood memories will have difficulty recalling or acknowledging these events in adulthood, effectively protecting themselves from the emotional distress associated with them. Next, denial. Denial is like putting on a pair of mental blinders. It involves refusing to accept the reality of a situation. A classic example is when a person ignores clear signs of a medical condition because acknowledging it would be too emotionally overwhelming. Third on my list is projection. Here individuals take their own unacceptable or undesirable feelings, thoughts or impulses and attribute them to others. It's a bit like looking in a psychological mirror and seeing our own issues in someone else. For instance, someone experiencing feelings of unfaithfulness might accuse their partner of infidelity, protecting their own emotions by projecting them onto their partner. And finally, at least for the moment, is displacement. This defence mechanism involves redirecting emotions from the original source to a less threatening target. Imagine if you can someone who had a bad day at work coming home and taking out their frustration on their family. Instead of confronting the workplace issues, they're displacing their anger onto innocent bystanders. These defence mechanisms aren't simply mental tricks. They serve a profound purpose. By deflecting anxiety and discomfort away from the conscious mind, they allow individuals to maintain a sense of equilibrium. They help protect our self-esteem, preserve our mental health, and at times serve as adaptive tools for navigating the complexity of life. Understanding defence mechanisms is not just an exercise in psychology. It offers us insights into the ways our minds are protecting us from more challenging aspects of our existence. It's a reminder that even when we're not consciously aware of something, our psyche is constantly at work, striving to maintain our psychological balance. Defence mechanisms, then, are not flaws in our psychological makeup, as some people might have us believe. They are adaptive strategies developed through evolution to help us cope with the complexities of life. They illustrate the ways in which our minds shield us from distress, though they may not always lead to the healthiest outcomes. By studying and understanding these mechanisms, we gain insight into our own behaviours and the behaviours of those around us which fosters greater self-awareness and perhaps the ability to make more conscious choices about how we navigate the intricacies of our own inner world. Studying cases is integral to all clinical training. They provide valuable insights, a window into the intricate interplay between personality and psychological well-being. So let's consider a first example. We're going to explore the story of Sarah, a 35-year-old woman who sought therapy for chronic impulsivity and difficulty forming stable relationships. Her history revealed a tumultuous childhood marked by inconsistent parental care. In psychodynamic terms, her personality structure was characterised by a dominant id, where impulsive desires frequently overruled her rationality, her ego and internalised values, her superego. Sarah's impulsivity led to personal and professional consequences, such as impulsive spending and unstable job histories. The therapeutic process, drawing from psychodynamic principles, focused on strengthening her ego. Techniques such as cognitive behavioural interventions and mindfulness exercises were used to help her gain greater impulse control. Over time, Sarah learnt to identify triggers that sparked impulsive behaviour and developed strategies to pause and consider her actions. This newfound balance between her id-driven impulses and her strength and ego allowed her to make healthier, more considered choices. 
leading to a remarkable process, progress in her personal and professional life. Our second case is Mark, a 28 year old man grappling with chronic self doubt and a pervasive fear of failure. His history revealed an upbringing where his parents consistently emphasized high achievement and success. In psychodynamic terms, Mark's personality structure exhibited a dominant superego, causing him to live under the constant shadow of internalized values and expectations. Mark's relentless pursuit of perfection paradoxically resulted in chronic self-doubt and anxiety. The therapeutic process focused on promoting a healthier balance between his id-driven desires for self-fulfillment and his overpowering superego. Techniques such as empathetic listening and exercises to encourage self-compassion were used to address his self-critical tendencies. Through these interventions, Mark gradually learned to accept himself, imperfections and all, without the crushing weight of unrelenting self-criticism. As his ego strengthened in the process, he began to experience a sense of self-worth, not tied solely to his achievements, allowing him to navigate life with greater confidence and fulfillment. These case studies underscore the intricate dance between personality structure and psychological well-being. They show how our inner workings, shaped by the id, ego and superego, profoundly influence our behaviour and mental health. By applying psychodynamic interventions tailored to our clients' specific needs, we find pathways of healing and personal growth. Understanding the structure of personality plays a key role in the process of psychotherapy. How do psychodynamic therapists, armed with insights into the id, ego and superego, address clients' defence mechanisms to facilitate self-awareness, personal growth and insight? Let's first understand the significance of grasping the structure of personality. The id, ego and superego, as introduced by Freud, serve as a psychological framework through which we view the inner workings of the human mind. The id, the primitive pleasure-seeking entity, is met by the rationality of the ego, which seeks to balance desires with reality. The superego represents our moral compass, guiding us according to societal and internalised values. As I explained before, in counselling, these constructs provide a map for understanding the intricate terrain of a client's psyche. Psychodynamic therapists are akin to skilled navigators in the sea of the human psyche. They work with the client's ego, helping them traverse the turbulent waters of the id's desires and the moral judgments of the superego. This is a collaborative process and the therapist's aim is to help the client establish a balanced relationship between these inner forces. For instance, if a client grapples with overwhelming desires rooted in the id, the therapist can provide strategies to help the ego gain control. By finding equilibrium, clients can then meet their needs without violating their values or facing inner conflict. The therapist is, in its essence, the guide on an intricate journey. A crucial aspect of this counselling process is addressing the defence mechanisms, the psychological shields that we employ to protect ourselves from distressing thoughts and emotions. Psychodynamic therapists gently confront these defences to create openings for growth and insight. For instance, if a client uses denial to avoid facing uncomfortable truths, the therapist might gently guide them to explore the reasons behind their resistance, thereby creating an opportunity for the client to understand the roots of their denial and ultimately to confront and address the underlying issues. The essence of psychodynamic counselling lies in fostering self-awareness and then insight. Clients are encouraged to explore their ego's defences, which influence their emotions and behaviours. This process reveals the root of their psychological struggles and empowers them to confront and resolve these issues. A therapist might, for instance, encourage a client to reflect on how their ego's defences lead them to avoid confronting difficult emotions. 
By recognizing this pattern, the client gains insight into the ways their psychological mechanisms operate, which can be profoundly liberating. So to quickly summarize, we began by considering the intricate interplay of the id, ego, and superego. These components of human personality, originally proposed by Sigmund Freud, shape our desires, rationality, and moral compass. We then look to defense mechanisms, those psychological shields we use to safeguard ourselves from distressing thoughts and emotions. These mechanisms, while protective, can also become barriers to self-awareness and personal growth. But why are these concepts still so relevant in the world of psychodynamic counseling? The answer lies in their ability to shed light on the inner workings of the human mind. They help therapists understand their clients at a profound level, enabling them to interpret the client's psyche and to facilitate transformation. Thank you. I hope that this has been interesting and useful. This is the second of five presentations exploring psychodynamic counselling. Thank you for watching. Your feedback is always welcome, as are ideas for future courses, classes or videos.